Okay, guys, I'm back. Okay, so I went ahead and off camera, I went ahead and um, glued down um, those pieces of paper that I had placed on here. Also, just to kind of mesh them into the piece even more, I took some other little pieces of um, music note paper. After I put these little pieces down, I put some music. I put this music note paper over this one. I put these down. I put this music note paper over. So I just added little bits of stuff over the top of these pieces of color. And that's the colors that we're going to use now. Okay, so what I have here is I have um, some acrylic paint, whatever, cheapy acrylic paints, Apple Barrel. So I have um, this uh, pink color, this a uh, little bit darker pink, this blue, and that blue. And these are the colors that we're going to be using to colorize this. Um, also, um, I'm going to be doing some drips with this pink here. Um, I might use some distressed paints in that same color family. Um, this is that uh, FW Pearlescence Dally Dollar Ronnie or Dollar Roni, whatever that we all got at Hobby Lobby. Also, I'm gonna drop some um, some drop some um, drips with this one too, uh, Bria Reese. Okay, or I may drip uh, Dr. Martin's. So we'll see which one. Okay. Uh, so I have some vintage stain photo. So okay. So you'll see as we go along. I'll kind of tell you what I'm doing. All right. For right now, I'm gonna start out with these acrylic paints, and I've watered them down. I need them nice and liquidy because what I need them is I need them to be um, see-throughy, translucent. Because we still we don't want to cover. We still want to see through the paints. We're just trying to colorize. See how you still see the print through there? Uh, let me get my spray bottle out. So I still want to see the book page through it. You still want to be able to see through it. So that's why I'm watering down the paints. Okay, what do I want to do next? We'll do this next. Sorry guys, I'm still spraying down these paints, making them a little more watery. What would we do without our water bottles? Okay. I think this is watered down enough. We'll see. Yep, it is. And I keep this little spray bottle right next to me just in case it's not. And we're choosing very light colors too. That's my whole palette here is all very light colors. Okay. And let's go with this blue over here. And then we're going to go with some of this pink color right here, which needs to be watered down some more. Okay. So right now I'm just using all the acrylic paints. And I'm trying to keep things very subdued. And if things get a little intense, which you may see, which just really isn't intense, but I'm trying to make everything very muted. Um, there's another technique at the end of all this that I do to mute out everything so it looks like it's everything's in the background and hiding behind each other because that's the goal. Um, the color is here. It's almost like we're just trying to like stain all the paper, just stain things. Um, just want to make sure I'm still in frame. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Make sure you guys are seeing everything. Alrighty. And. Okay. We're going to do some blue over here, just a little bit deeper blue.
and kind of the more haphazard you are with it, not trying to get, not trying to be perfect, better. All right, I want to um, use a little bit of this stuff. I'm going to use some of the Tim Holtz Distress uh, Sugar Spun. And I'm going to put that right down here. And we're going to do a little water spray on here first. These are those, uh, these are the daubers. There we go. I love this color. Very pretty, very subdued pink. This sugar spun. And what I like to do is I like to just um, go through my stash of stuff and um, and start picking out some different things that I haven't used. Like, I haven't been using all my distressed paints. I need to use these darn things. I have them. I need to use them. So that's my biggest, some of my biggest advice is before you start your project, um, take a little basket, go shopping around your craft room, and pull out um, stuff that you, have that you haven't been using. If you have watercolors that you haven't been using, um, if you have acrylics that you haven't been using, pull them out. Start using your stuff. Okay. These are fun because you don't even need a brush. You just use them. It's pretty cool. Okay, I'm going to use this one. This one's called Victoria Velvet. It looks really similar to that spun sugar, but I'm using it right now. Okay. So all, our goal is to just try to give a nice stain on all the paper here. I hope my camera's still on. Yeah, it is. A nice clear stain so that you still see um, you still see all the paper below underneath. Okay. Make sure there's no white space anywhere. Okay. Okay. I might try to add a little bit of blue right here, just a second. Um, just a little. No, don't want some blue there. Well, right here. Add a little water. Okay, there we go. And we'll leave the rest of that pink. That looks really pretty. Okay, so now what we want to do clean up my mess a little bit. This mat that I'm using right now, you guys, is um, at Dollar Tree. They have the shelf liners and, you know, they're nice and shiny so that you can wipe them down, the shelf liners. So that's what I'm using here. What I really want to do is get myself a piece of glass for my table. So that's a goal for my craft room and then here for my art room. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this pink color. This is that uh, Dalaroni pearly pink, which I wish I would have got a couple of these because this color is gorgeous. And we want to do some drips from the top. Okay. Like that. And then I want to take my brush, add a little water. And you guys, I'm sorry that I'm bringing up my paper so you guys aren't able to see, but I'm creating drips. Okay, and then then I'm letting it drip here too. So I'm going to show you guys what I just did here in just a second, as soon as I accomplish some drippage. Okay, there we go. All right, so see what I did. So. All right, so you see that drippage there? All right, let's create some more drippage. I'm gonna do some drippage from the corner. And then I take my brush with a little bit of water and just like really make it exaggerate. There we go. So I'm gonna be lifting my paper up. I'll be coming back down in just a second. Here we go. I'm gonna add a little water here. And we're going to just, 
So what I did, I took my paper, I added water, and then I just took my paper and held it sideways. So I'm holding it different ways, not just um, up and down, but hold it sideways too. So that you get some drips that way. And I'm going to just take these drips and make them a little less obvious. Okay, there we go. Okay, so there we go with that. And the messier the better, you guys. The messier the better. Okay, so that was with that. Then um, I'm going to take, um, I think, this color here and do some drips. I don't know what this, you know, I think I used the sepia Dark Martens last time. Let me just test this out. I want to see what this looks like before I throw this on here. Oh, I like that. Okay, this is um, the uh, Bria Rose, uh, like a dark brown color, and it has some glitter in it. It's really pretty. Okay, I haven't used this one yet. I've used some of the Bria's, but I haven't used this one yet. Oh, that's gorgeous. Oh, I love that. Loving. So I put that at the top, you guys see, and I'm just holding my paper up now. Oh, this is so beautiful. Oh, I just love it. Okay, you guys, sorry. I'm over here looking at it. You guys aren't even able to see. Okay, so there's that. Let's take some from the corner over here. And then we'll go like this. So what I'm doing is I'm just going like this all kinds of ways to get all kinds of cool drips. Okay, there we go. That looks fabulous. I am loving that. Okay, I'm not going to create any more drippage. Okay, you know what? No, I'm not. Well, maybe I should. All right, you know what? I do want to create one more set of drips with brown, but not with this one here. God, this is gorgeous. Oh, I can't wait to use it. I got to use that when I do some like watercolor painting type of stuff. Because that's uh, fabulousness right there. Okay, um, let me see if I have my... I have so much stuff on my desk. It's like ridiculous. I'm looking for my, I may not be using this because I'm looking for my little squeezer thing, which I'm not seeing. Hmm. I should just have it out here on my table. All right, you know what? I'll just use my paintbrush here. Just a second. Let me rinse this out good. Okay. So let me just use my brush. Oh my God, this dried out. Oh, I'm so sad. You guys, this right here is completely dried out and I don't even know why. All the rest of my stuff is good. This um, Dr. Martens and it's expensive. Oh, bummer. Hmm. That's strange that that, that, that um, dried out. Hmm. I don't know. Okay, anyway. I wanted to have one more set of drippage, so we'll just still use, go with this one right here. You know, I always say, use your stuff, because you never know when your stuff's going to dry out. And I didn't even use that very much. So, okay. So, there we go. Created some more drippage there. And I don't know if you guys are seeing the sparkle that's coming from the, from both of these, but... They are fabulous. Uh, loving those. So you guys, look how much stuff I've already used. I used uh, Tim Holtz Distress. I used the Bria Reese. I used the Dollar Roni. I used um, uh, regular uh, acrylic paint. So look how much stuff I just used. So that's cool. Really getting to use all your stuff. It's mixed media. You should be using all your stuff. So that's an accomplishment. And you're going to get a cooler look because you're mixing so much different things together. Okay. So... The next thing I need to do is I need to just dry all this with my uh, blow dryer or my heat gun and um, get this nice and dry and then we're going to do some stenciling, okay? And when we do the stenciling, we're going to use the same color palette. So, because if you, this is all background papers. If you want things to be in the background, stick with the same color palette. Don't go crazy and put yellow on here now and it'll look like it's all cohesive and it's all background paper, okay? So, 
Um, I'm going to pause my camera and I'll be back in a moment. Okay, guys, I'm back. So, um, I dried this and I want to say something else. I did use another one of these, uh, Daler, Daler Roni. I'm just going to say Daler Roni. Um, this is a sepia. I almost was scared it was too dark, but once I put it on and then I took my paintbrush to the top of it with some water and then I even sprayed it and let it drip down, it gave a beautiful dark color that gave some really good staining and it also has a little bit of glitter in it. So I am digging on these things. Oh, I cannot wait to watercolor with these. Like watercolor my, my girls or whatever I want to paint. I'm totally going to paint with these inks. Okay. Now, the next step that I like to do is I like to use stencils. So, um, and I'm my palette, let me show you my palette. This is all acrylic paints, no water added. So I have that blue, that light blue, this pink, and that pink, okay? So we're going to stay in that color palette so that this all looks like background. Nothing's going to look, nothing's going to be too standout-ish because we're creating background papers. Plus, we're paint. um the whole look of this paper is just very subdued, okay? Like, look, you can't even really see that design in there, which is fine. This paper, paper needs to look, well, this is how I'm designing this paper, to look very subdued and very magical. I would describe this line of, of that I'm making like unicorn tears. That's what I'm creating. This paper line, oh my God. I just, I'm gonna call this paper line that I'm creating Unicorn Tears. Oh my gosh, cool. That just hit me. Because if you think about a Unicorn's Tears, they would be like so, like little droplets of water. Precious little droplets of water or, or dew. That would be Unicorn Tears. So that is what I'm calling this paper pad, Unicorn Tears. Oh my God, I love that. You know what, I need to write that down because if I don't write that down, I might forget. So I'm going to write that down right now. Okay, there we go. So I'm gonna keep going with stencils. I'm gonna choose a different one. Let me really quickly write down Unicorn Tears because I love that. Okay, I need a pad of paper, okay. I always have pads of paper everywhere. I am like such, you guys, I collect these pads of paper like insanely, like we all do. And, um, unicorn tears. And, uh, I use them. It's the one thing in my craft room that I consistently use are these paper pads. <laughs> I love them. I have them all over my house. I have one in my bedroom by my bed. I have one in my kitchen. I have one on the refrigerator. I have one in my craft room here in my art studio. I have them everywhere. Okay. All right. That's important. All right. Next. Oh, you know what else I want to do is have a little bit of white. A little white acrylic paint. Get that out. Might use a little bit of that. Okay. Oh, and what I'm using to uh, go through my um, things, it's just uh, makeup sponges. I love makeup sponges. So get your stencils out when you're doing this and just have a play with your stencils. I am using things that are smaller because we're making background, right? Background paper. Even if this is the background, if you're going to put like a unicorn on here or one of your girls on here or whatever, it's still your background, right? So, but even if I did something that was more substantial, if I stick with these colors, it'll still look like it's in the background. Because I am going to put some things that are a little bit more substantial on here in a minute. I'm really liking using this light pink color on this. This is one of my favorite stencils. I just love the little specks it gives everywhere. Okay. And let's use this light pink color. I told you, I get addicted to this stencil. I don't know why. I love it. Hopefully I'm still in frame. Okay. All right. I got to give up that stencil now. I got to go on to a different one. <laughs> 
I could just keep going on with that stencil. Um, these little circles. I'm going to use white for these. Okay. And as everybody knows with stencils, you don't want to use very much paint on your sponge. You'll get seepage. But, you know, when you're doing this kind of work, what does it matter if you get seepage? Seepage could be another effect. <laughs> so, whatever. Cool. That looks cool. These are little flowers on the edge here, so I'm going to use those little flower, do those little flowers right here. Cool. Okay. Next. These are little, little bits. So I'm really focusing right now on the little bits. So choosing stencils that are small. I'm going to put a small print on my art. I would say choose more small little stencils, stencils that have a small little effect, than choosing um, the bigger ones. I mean, there's going to be a time for some bigger stencils, but I would start out with small. But it's your work. You do whatever you want to do. Okay, there we go. That stencil's done. And the less the, the, the less time you take um, stressing over each thing, the better. This is one of my favorite stencils. It's an Andy Andy Skinner stencil. You guys, this is awesome. This just watch. I'm getting ready to do some fun stuff with this. I love this 751. You're going to see that number throughout the, my artwork on this whole thing. Um, does that number have anything to do with anything? No. I just think it looks cool. This has a cool effect. <laughs> Look how cool that looks. Uh, love that. Let's do a 751 over here, too. And I'm going to use a pink that's a little bit more it's a deeper pink color. Cool. I just love the numbers. Okay. Also, this like this number 15, I just think that's cool. Let's put that somewhere like right here. That number 15 is just cool. Check my camera. Make sure you guys are seeing things. Okay. Let me just show you this stencil up close so you guys know what I'm talking about. See how cool that stencil is? Isn't that awesome, you guys? It's that number right there. And I got this stencil, believe it or not, um, Tuesday morning. You guys, Tuesday morning is another good place to buy your stencils. When they um, get stencils there, they'll get a bunch in. Watch people's haul videos and you'll find out when they have stencils. And they'll be like $1.99. And this one was probably $1.99. And they have cool stencils there. Okay, I'm going to do the travel right here. They have the coolest stencils. I have the best, well, I don't know if it's the best, but I have a good stencil collection because of, because of, um, because why? Oh, because of Tuesday morning. And then I got a bunch of great stencils from, um, Hobby Lobby, when they had the 75, well, they still have it, the 75% off sale. You guys go over in the section, it's in the craft section, and you can get yourself a bunch of great stencils. Ooh, I like that in that deeper blue. Um, I'm going to put this right here up on the side. It says ticket number 37. I should order myself another one of these stencils just in case, um, just in case uh, this one ever like wears out because I am obsessed with the stencil. You know, I have a brother scan and cut, so I probably can scan this in. That's what I'll probably do. Okay. Um, don't want to do any more. Yeah, we'll do a little more here and there. 
Let me get my light pink color out. Switch colors now. 